again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you. And today I have got an exceedingly easy, easy shawl for you. This is the Diagonal Granny Shawl. Now, typically the, you know, the, the normal generic granny shawl, which I, I love, it starts at the top center of the neckline and you go in sort of like a V format. Well, yeah, that's cool. That's very traditional, but I thought it would be cool if, well, what if you're just working from one side? Now, the really cool thing is that it does create the same perfect triangle shape. And so you actually start, this is actually the finishing edge here, and you start all the way at one corner to begin with. You start at one corner and it's a two row repeat. Unlike the traditional granny shawl, uh, which is a one row repeat. This is a two row repeat because you have two separate edges. You have the neckline edge and then you have the the bottom edge. And it is, oh, it is just so easy. I love it. And this, like so many of the granny projects, it is great for having some mindful stitching to relax, get a great project done, and it is so darn simple. Now, of course, you can use whatever yarn you want, whatever hook size works best for you. Me, personally, I'm just letting you know what I used for this project. It is Lion Brand's Mandala. No, this project is not sponsored, but of course, I like to let you know what it is that I use. And it is in the colorway of Chimera. All right. So it's got sort of a lovely sort of autumn-hued rainbow kind of colorway. Really, really like it. Now, as far as the yardage, it is a weight of three, and it is approximately 590 yards. I needed to go into a second cake of this yarn. I didn't finish the second cake, but I needed to go into a second one for it to be large enough. That's just me personally. Now, as far as yarns and colors and so forth. Well, this particular pattern, I would say, it really lends itself to a, a colorway that is either an ombre, which is a nice slow color change, or one where you have blocks of color, like the, the mandala. If you're using a yarn with a very quick change variegation, it's gonna get pretty much lost in translation. If you're using a completely solid color for the entire project, that too will kind of get lost in translation. So personally, I think that what overall looks best as far as the effect is if you're using something like this or an ombre. You know, to each their own, it's just my personal opinion, but you know, so, you know, have at thee. Now, I'm going to be using some of the leftover yarn that I had from this shawl, um, which I have right here. And I'm going to be using a size H. Focus, please. Kind of, sort of-ish. Oh, oh, sort of. All right, so a size H, five millimeter hook for today's example. And without further ado, Let's get started. Alrighty, first things first with row one, we need, of course, our slip knot. And we're going to be working into our first chain instead of a, a magic ring or a magic loop. So we have one chain, but then we need a double crochet with a chain one space. So one, two, three, and four. So you need five chains to begin with. And then into that first chain, do three double crochets. And you can cinch up your little tail there. And yeah, believe it or not, that is row one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guess what? We're going to go on directly to row two. So 
row two. By the way, typically with the uh, traditional granny shawl, you know, you would then, you know, from here, uh, chain three, do three more double crochets, chain one and a double crochet. Well, we're only doing half of it. So going to from here for row two, chain up four, which is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one space. So one, two, three, four turn the work. Now into this space here, three doubles, chain one, one double. Okay, so this actually, this here is going to be the top edge, and this is going to be going down the bottom edge. Now, this is still early days here, but this edge here and this edge here are going to be the bottom edges. This is going to be the top neck edge. So that, yes, believe it or not, that was row two. So let's do row three right now. So row three, chain up four. One, two, three, four turn the work and into that chain space, three doubles, okay, now we have to go into this space. Now, this next part is, I would say, dealer's choice. You could chain one or you could just go right in. Personally, I like the chain one space in between the clusters. So chain one, and then into this chain space, three double crochets. All right, now can sort of scooch that off. Also, another thing that you could do, if you're not crazy about how this looks, the, the third double crochet what you could conceivably do is the third double crochet you could do into the third chain, one, two, three, the third chain from the bottom there. Just go into underneath both of those loops like so and do your third double crochet into that third chain from the bottom. You know, personally, I really don't think it makes much of a difference. <laughs> but you know, to each their own, right? So, and that is row three. Now you're probably saying to yourself, is that it? Well, essentially, yeah. Um, so basically, like I said, this edge here where you have your three doubles, chain one double, this is your top neckline edge. And then this edge and this edge, well, that it, those are your bottom edges. But for the sake of being thorough, Let's do a couple more repeats of the back and forth, if you will. All right, so let's do a couple more. All right, so for row four, let's just say, you know, it's rows four and five for the repeat, okay? Because uh, we now have ourselves somewhat established here. So row four, start off by chaining up four because we need to go up and over. So chain four. One, two, three, four, turn the work, and then skipping these doubles here, going into that chain space with three doubles. Chain one, and then into this little chain space here, three doubles, chain one, one double, so three doubles, chain one, and one double. Then row five, chain four. You always start with a chain four regardless of what side you're on. So chain four, one, two, three, four. 
So into this chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one, and three doubles into the next space. And so if you turn it like such, as you can see, yes, it does create that perfect triangle shape. Ah, oh, I love it. All right, so let us go back to row four for the repeat. Because I like spending time with you guys. All right, chain up four. One, two, three, four. Turn the work. And then skipping over these three doubles, Three doubles into this chain space. There we go. Chain one. Three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one. And three doubles into that last chain one space. But because it is a uh, sort of an increase side, it's three doubles, chain one, one double. So three doubles, chain one, one double. Because this is the increase side, and this is sort of the, the maintaining the status quo, you know, the status quo side. So yeah, let, let's just keep going. <laughs> let's just keep going. Um, also, this would make an excellent stash buster project, definitely. And if you guys are anything like me, you have a stash. Now, as far as utilizing this as a stash buster project, I would totally, totally, totally recommend that the yarn that you use, try to make sure that the yarn is the same material. If it's wool, use all wool. If it's a blend, keep it all the same. Um, if it's acrylic, keep it all acrylic. You know, that way the, the, the wash care instructions will be so much easier. Also, make sure that the weight of the yarn is all the same. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty darn wonky. Other than that, I think it would make an awesome, awesome stash buster. Another thing that you could try doing is incorporating the, the, the granny merge shawl pattern in the same way that we're using it here, creating solid stripes interspersed with the, the granny clusters. That could be cool too. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this pattern. Grannies, granny, granny, ugh, granny stitches, granny clusters, they're sort of like the DNA of crocheting, you know, sort of like little Legos, little building blocks. You can do so much with them. And this project kind of proves that point. You know, you can do so very much. And I just wanted to build out this little swatch to show you just how easy and quick and simple it really is. And there you go. So in a very short time, we have already created a cute little swatch. Absolutely love it. Um, now, of course, as you keep going, um, like for instance, you know, even if the, the length of each color is the same as you go, um, the, the stripes will become more and more narrow because of course you need more and more yarn to complete each stripe. Um, but, uh, 
I love it. All right. So listen, guys, as always, I hope you like this tutorial. Um, you know, it's sort of a, you know, a different take on an old classic that we know and love. At least we do on this channel. Anything granny goes. All right. So listen, if you like this tutorial, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know, I appreciate your appreciation. Indeed, I do. And stay tuned because there's always more fun. You know, subscribe. You know, I post videos as often as I can, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations, or of course, visit my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, for video game playthrough and commentary. A lot of fun. Would like to see you there too. And you know what to do until next time. I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.